In the following film, Alastair Hotston Moore, FRCBS, demonstrates how to remove a nasopharyngeal polyp from a cat. This initiative to help share veterinary knowledge has been made possible by the very generous sponsorship of Swan Morton, the global leader in the manufacture of quality surgical blades and scalpels. This is Lilla. She's a approximately four-year-old cat, a rather uncertain uh, history, been in the owner's possession for a few months. And during this time, she's always had a tendency to dyspnea, inspiratory dyspnea, and snoring. And the referring vets have examined her under anaesthesia and suspicion of a nasopharyngeal polyp. Uh, we've done a CT, which confirms the presence of nasopharyngeal polyp and also of unilateral otitis media. We'll, uh, we'll show you the CT films uh, separately. Uh, so we're going to use traction to remove the polyp, uh, as you'll see. So in a moment, we're going to reposition her so she's on the back. And then the instruments I use are uh, Alice tissue forceps to hold the soft palate, uh, and then some small right angle forceps, which are useful then to open the space and grasp the polyp to remove it. Uh, sometimes it comes out very easily, uh, on other occasions it can take uh, uh, several attempts to grasp it successfully before it's removed. So we'll, uh, we'll carry on with that now. Here we have Lilla's CT scans. Uh, uh, we've got uh, slices dorsoventral through, uh, uh, through the skull. Uh, so we're starting here uh, in the middle of the nose and then as we come further back you can see each nasal cavity here. Uh, further back again, this is all unremarkable so far. Uh, now we're beginning to see the nasopharynx here, above the hard palate, and as we come further back, here's the nasopharynx above the soft palate. And here, coming into view as I scroll backwards and forwards, you can see that the majority of the nasopharynx here is filled with a soft tissue density. Uh, seemingly uh, based on the left side, uh, rather circular, rather globoid, and very typical of an azopharyngeal polyp. Uh, and as we come further back again, we'll come to see the uh, middle ears on each side. So there's the right middle ear, which is pretty normal airfield in uh, both the inner and outer chambers. And on the uh, left side, we can see soft tissue density. Uh, this is non contrast, it could be uh, fluid or it could be polypoid material occupying both um, uh, chambers of the middle ear in this cat. Uh, I think there's minimal bone change around this. Uh, there's certainly not signs of gross bone thickening or proliferation. Uh, so this may be a candidate where uh, the problem may be resolved by attraction of the nasopharyngeal polyp followed by corticosteroid therapy rather than requiring a ventral bullar osteotomy. Uh, so that's the plan in this cat. Once it's recovered from anaesthesia, it will be discharged with the course of uh, post-operative corticosteroids, uh, and we'll see what progress it makes over the coming months. So Lilla has a nasopharyngeal polyp, uh, and we're going to try and remove this with a uh, attraction technique. As you see, she's in dorsal recumbency under anaesthesia. We've got an endotracheal tube in place, and uh, my nurse is holding the tube uh, because that will be easier to move around than if we have it tied in place. Uh, we'll start by opening the mouth. Uh, could you hold there, Abby? Hold the mouth open for me. Hold the tongue. That's great. If you hold the tongue, then I'll be good. I'm going to bring that on that side. I'm going to put a little bit of local anaesthetic in here. She's already had some uh, of that on. So the polyp will be above the palate here. You maybe appreciate as I push this way, there's some, okay. something firm on that side. So that will be where the polyp is. Now I'm going to grasp the caudal border of the soft palate and pull it forwards. And then I can appreciate that there is a, a mass in the space there. There you can see the polyp just popped into view now. See this pink firm tissue that I'm touching with my forcep here. And get a good grasp around that.
Not got a good hold yet. Swap the area and try again. Some of the polyp, but hopefully we can get more than that. And finally, we have the pull. Oh, hey, yep. Yeah. Pull back from my look because it's. Yep. Um, okay. Pretty good. Well, that's uh, most of it there. We had a little bit before. No bleeding obvious at the moment. that for a moment, give it another swab and then we'll uh, let everything rest and then we'll have another look at some mucus here which will be accumulating around the polyp. Bit more polyp come out on the swab there. And 
looks pretty clean there now. Some swelling after uh, rather more manipulation than is usually necessary. But no longer any uh, polypoid looking tissue coming out. So we're there, we're going to give her some uh, corticosteroids to reduce the inflammation and then we'll uh, gradually slowly wake her up. So we've removed the uh, polyp there and as you see I use some uh, standard Alice tissue forceps typically to uh, grasp the caudal board of the soft palate and then either another pair of Alice tissue forceps or some right angle forceps are helpful to, uh, to remove the polyp itself. Uh, this is uh, the polyp here, a globoid piece of, uh, of soft tissue and you can notice reassuringly that this actually has the stalk here uh, so this is the uh, polyp, the stalk of the polyp that would have been coming through the eustachian tube uh, from the uh, middle ear of the cat. Uh, and uh, we'll now be recovering from the cat from uh, anaesthesia. We're going to give it some hydrocortisone to uh, reduce swelling after the surgical manipulation.